I'm an OCD survivor. She's an OCD survivor. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first question that I want to ask you, Jelby, is how old were you when you first noticed this behavior? I was in my 20s, um, late 20s. I was out of college. I was working already. Um, in my, right before I graduated from college, I became anorexic and bulimic, and I started having all these afflictions that um, were theretofore unnamed, and so I really did not know what was happening to me. Um, but I was anorexic and I was bulimic, and then it just kind of um, progressed on to also being obsessive compulsive, and I used to, um, it used to disrupt my life quite a bit. Um, I had an obsession with, or a phobia about oils and butter. I couldn't allow, if anybody came into my house with like a a stick of butter or a bottle of oil, I would like, like, I would freak out. And they would look at me like, um, you know, what's the problem? And I, I kind of wouldn't like say anything right then, but after they left, I would like go and wrap it up in tin foil like 10 times and then Ziploc bags and then tin foil some more. Or the butter, I would wrap it in tin foil and wrap it in plastic and put it in a Ziploc bag and then do that a couple more times. And But I would never open it to use it because I was afraid if I touched the butter, that then I would touch myself. And then the next thing that I touched would get butter on it. And then I would get butter, I would sit down and get butter on my sofa. And then every time I sat down on my sofa, I would get butter on whatever I was wearing. And then it was like, there was no end to it. It would just completely contaminate my whole life. So that was quite a fear of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it did tend to um, hamper my baking <laughs> that I like to do sometimes. And baking was not too good for me. Um, I did, a lot of rituals before I could get out of the house. I could never have any of my friends come and meet me at my apartment to pick me up to go somewhere. They either had to wait out in the car um, or I had to meet them somewhere because uh, it would take me so long to do a ritual around the house to check everything in the house, to check the lights, to check the stove. I checked the stove 10, 20, 30 times, make sure all the burners were off. Check, make sure the refrigerator is closed, make sure the microwave is off, make sure that the windows are closed, make sure that everything is as it should be, and then I couldn't get out the door. And if I got an interruption anywhere in the course of the ritual, I had to start from the beginning again, all over again. So that was quite exhausting, and, um, and I would lock the lock and check the lock, but in order to check the lock, I had to unlock the lock. <laughs> so then I had to lock the lock again, but then I wanted to be sure that it was locked. So in order to be sure that it was locked, I had to unlock it. So that went on for quite some time oh, okay. too. Um, <laughs> that was a kind of a, a laborious exercise. Um, and those are the kind of things that, uh, that was just my life. That was just all it was. So I, what purpose it served was, um, I believe, to calm me because I was so mm -hmm. out of control on the inside and and it was the only thing that actually gave me a, a sense of control. Um, it was imaginary but but it was a coping skill so I used it and I used it well. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was going to ask you is if you felt out of control but you're making it sound like this was something that was very soothing and kept you very calm and you didn't feel out of control while you were doing it. Exactly, because it um, it's almost like reciting a mantra or something. Mm -hmm. It's rhythmic, it's repetitive, it's almost like, you know, being petted or something. It's, um, it's soothing to your psyche and um, I didn't really know that at the time, but that is the, uh, the purpose of that is a coping skill. Um, and oddly enough, I, I did eventually get control over my lack of control. Right, and I was going to ask you about that, your obsessive compulsive disorder, how you, do you use any type of outlet to, to help you through this process? Oh, my art, or? without doubt. My art, since I started doing video two years ago, um, it's the difference between me, like, feeling like I have a purpose in life and just being a blob. Um, and I use the obsessive um, aspect to my advantage when doing things like editing the, perf the search for perfection and the, the editing and um, 
I use it, but I use it to actually do something. So I, I still have those tendencies, but at least I end up with something at the end. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Instead of a, a stick of butter that's wrapped up 50 times. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that feels so crazy to me, but... <laughs> but you don't look crazy, so... <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so, Joby, she is a very um, successful artist in Chicago, and she does a lot of shows. She was written up in The Reader for her video, Haunted. And she has a sequel to Haunted. And can you tell us about that? It's called Mother Memory Lost. And it involves me and some of my psychological uh, foibles and um, my kind of craziness and uh, confusion about memories of my mother who I felt abandoned me when I was seven and because she died. And I was looking at um, some old family footage which I hadn't been aware of until just recently. Um, and um, I have conflicting feelings about it, so this kind of shows um, some of those feelings, how I um, interpret some of the feelings that I had of the confusion. Hmm. It's Doris Snow. Thank you so much, Joby. Thank you, and we'll be watching this over and over and over and <laughs> Until over you get it right. and over <laughs> again. Thank Make you. Make sure you're standing perfectly square. <laughs> Lined up. Lined up with the universe. Okay, thanks, Joby. All right.